like I was putting words in his mouth. I knew the words that would come out of his mouth. And when you get a team that works together like that, it's very difficult, I think, to sort out who, where, where they come to. It's, it's, a, it's a mix that is so, uh, sort of, uh, what's the word, um, where you pull, I don't know the word right now, but where you pull it all together. It's like brainstorming. It's like, where did the idea start? And so I think it's, I can't really say. Uh, I think that sometimes things are fed by the campaigns because they're, the can something has come up emergency and the candidate doesn't have time. But I think many times it's, it's the result of an ongoing dialogue they've had a month ago and something comes up and they, the campaign knows what the candidate thinks and puts it out there and the candidate can look at it and take it with it. But to be absolutely sure, I can't say. It's a, it's a very interesting question. Hello, and my name is Gregor Szymanski, I'm coming from Zielonagura University. I have a question, uh, how could I comment, comment uh, the infos that, uh, for example, Mr. Putin is a president of Germany, or for example, also, uh, Mr. Zapatero is a prime minister of countries, uh, of one of, of the country in Latin America. Uh, I mean the infos uh, which was used by John McCain uh, last time uh, for the media. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I mean the, the infos that, uh, Mr. McCain told that uh, Mr. Putin is a chief of uh, Germany government and uh, was used uh, in the past. Uh, right. Mr. McCain used uh, the speech and told about it. Uh, this one part of my, of, my, of my question. And the second is that uh, Mr. Zapatero is a chief of the government uh, which uh, came from the uh, Latin America country okay. uh, area. I, well, all I, I, I didn't quite understand your question, but let me just start by saying, you know, in the, in the debate, um, uh, McCain made a, a very interesting, had a very interesting moment where he said, I look into Putin's eyes and I see three things, K, G, B. And that was a very effective statement because he was essentially differentiating himself from Bush, who, remember, famously said that he looked in Putin's eyes and saw his soul and saw that he was somebody that was simpatico that he could work with. Um, so, you now what, was there another aspect of your question that I'm missing? I was thinking that uh, Mr. McCain, uh, maybe he's not able to rule big country, great country, uh, which is not responsible for the whole world, uh, because he don't know the facts, yeah? About the famous politicians uh, in the world, like Russia, like uh, Spain, because he was, Misunderstanding and uh, not uh, using the proper facts, uh, speaking to the uh, media, the ju journalists. Yeah, I mean that. It's my well, point he, of view. He does. McCain has made a number of mistakes, uh, and you have to give someone credit. Being on the presidential campaign is one of the more stressful things anyone does. Constant pressure, constant questions, constant crises. So people are, are going to be tired. They're going to make mistakes. Now McCain, McCain is in a more difficult position in some ways than Obama on the campaign trail because the unstated question that people have is about his age. And when he makes a mistake, when he confuses something, it calls to question the lurking thing that's in some people's minds, is he too old? No one says it, but it's, it, does, it does lurk. So when he makes these mistakes, generous people say he's tired, he's on the campaign trail. But other people may say this is a sign that he's getting too old to lead. You know, so he has to be he has to be particularly careful. Obama has the opposite. You know, if he makes a mistake like that, he sounds like he is inexperienced. So each those mistakes weigh in those two different ways. I don't, and I may be wrong, but I don't think Obama has made a number of mistakes like who's the president of Spain or whatever uh, that I'm aware of. Perhaps he has, but I've not heard about it in the media. Okay, there will be two last questions. All right, let's have some, if there's someone who hasn't had a chance. <laughs> I'd like to still to address <coughs> the vision. Uh, you know, those two candidates, do they give enough thought about and what can they do about the market in the United States? <coughs> we had a lot of electoral fraud 
in many people, including me, think that uh, the first term of Bush was due to, an elect to the electoral fraud. Now, right now, I don't know if it's fraud or not, but uh, we speak about who, who can vote, who cannot vote in the United States. Right. If I understand some uh, blacks or some prisoners, uh, in, in prisoners in some states are not allowed to vote, if I understand it. Now, the second thing is that uh, is the most important document now to, be, uh, to, to vote is your driving license. Many blacks who change domicile very often, they have no car, they cannot drive. Mm -hmm. So, I just wonder if those two, uh, two people who are going to profit from the elections and their parties giving up the thing enough thought to, to a thought which becomes a fashion in the United States, not speaking about politics, but, but business world and so on. Well, first of all, uh, both campaigns have, in their visions, have very strong statements about ethics, about uh, conducting presidential elections, and, uh, and also congressional spending, and eliminating pork barrel spending. So I think that they at least stand for ethics. I think what is going to be very interesting to see is in, toward the end of an election is when the dirty stuff starts happening. It's pretty common. And already we've heard that students, I think, in Virginia were being told that if they were from out of state, they were not allowed to, to vote in Virginia, which is not true. And we, we find the dirty politicking occurs at the end of every election to try to convince people either to demonize one candidate, or that they can't vote, or they shouldn't go to the voting polls. So I don't know to what extent, uh, and there are a lot of people, for instance, who feel that the 2004 election was won because Diebold and their voting machines in, in Ohio were corrupt and actually shifted the election to George Bush. Now that can't be proved uh, because no one's gone into those machines, but there is a certain sentiment that that is what happened. And with the 2000, with the Chads in Florida, there's just a lot of questions in the air, more so now after these two elections, about what's going to be happening. Like it's something very much to pay attention to, to who's being, uh, and we will hear it in the media. You know, any examples of people being getting midnight phone calls, telling them not to vote, being stopped from voting. It'll, 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 we will hear about it. Final question. You have someone else about it. Is there someone else who wants to ask a question? All right. We have to pass the microphone. Okay, um, considering that uh, Mr. McCain uh, is having a cancer of skin, yeah? Uh, because he's sick and I'm also disabled like the asthma. Uh, and I think that uh, <coughs> disabled people or, or something like that is making people more sensitive. But considering that uh, he, is not, he will be not able to rule in the country, the United States, uh, and the president will be Sarah Palin, Mr. Sarah Palin, uh, is Sarah Palin uh, able to rule this country? If, for example, uh, her has, has, uh, husband uh, is working for the British Petroleum, uh, for the petrochemistry industry, and also Sarah Palin was, uh, was cleaning the the, the, the city hall in the Alaska uh, when she was a uh, governor. Uh, I mean the, the thing uh, with uh, one worker of the department uh, who was uh, fired because uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, having dates uh, with her, her, her cousin, yeah? Right. Well, I, I think this is going to be a very interesting question. You, you definitely should watch the debate to, uh, Thursday night. I would say, as a, I'll tell you one interesting story. As a psychotherapist in Manhattan, two weeks ago on Monday, I had seven patients. What do you think the issue was for four of them? It was Sarah, Palin, angst. They, one person came in and I have, said, I have only one problem today. I am so afraid Sarah Palin is going to become president of the United States. So in liberal New York, there are a lot of people who are afraid. But interestingly enough, in the last couple of weeks, uh, there have been considerable change in her favorability ratings. It's now at a minus 10. And a lot of those people who are very nervous are calming down. But it is certainly her interview with Katie Couric last week and her interview with um, Charles Gibson did, for those who were 
nervous about that. It confirmed for them that she's not going to be able to be president and she shouldn't be on the ticket for those who support.